Here are the energies for the month of Leo. Leo is when the sun passes through the constellation of Leo and tends to be around the 22nd of July to the 22nd of August. Leo is ruled by the sun and the sun is the centre of our solar system. So we're looking at the core radiant centre energies outside in our planetary bodies but also inside our body in the heart and the solar plexus. So this is a great time to rekindle the fires inside to really radiate, radiate your confidence from the centre of your being and enjoy and express your life force energy. It's a very golden five-pointed star kind of a feeling to stand up straight, to be confident and to enjoy the sun at its height and at its warmest. We know that soon we'll be going into autumn so this is also slightly tinted with a sad aspect and the corn harvest was brought in at this time of year normally around the 1st of August and the Celtic festival Lunasad was on the 1st of August dedicated to the sun god Lu who sacrifices himself in order that we can have the corn and poppies grew in the fields representing the blood of the sacrificed king so this is a very happy and golden and radiant aspect but with the view that the sun is now going to be in its decline so it's got that kind of knowledge and awareness. Leo is the lion, which is all about pride and glory and kingliness. It's a very regal aspect and the fixed star in the constellation of Leo is called Regulus. And this is where we get Rex and Royal and all of our royal words from the uh, Leo constellation. And a new moon is when the sun and the moon are in the same sign. So this is Leo Sun and Leo Moon. And a new moon opens up a two week window where we can initiate new projects and we can begin new ways of being. So this is a double Leo energy coming in and this is really gonna be a very golden time to create. It's all about passion and creativity with the element of fire and to actually listen to your heart's desire. Sometimes we're busy producing and creating but it's from a very old plan and this is going to be a great time for us to actually reconnect with what our heart says matters and what we really feel and what we really take responsibility for and what we really want to see come into being. So there's quite a social aspect to this month. It's not all about in our personal lives. This is about visioning a world and then radiating those energies out so that we can actually affect what's going on on the outside. And the Leo New Moon is a very powerful two-week window, one we can really radiate, initiate and create with those solar energies. So Aquarius is opposite Leo in the zodiac and is the, the man, the ice man. So we have the ice man of Aquarius with the warm heart of the lion and the sovereign aspect. And that's what the axis of Leo and Aquarius is all about possibly correlating to the Sphinx, which is a lion with a man's face. So when the Sphinx was aligned to the constellation Leo rising in the age of Leo, we're now looking at the opposite. We're in the age of Aquarius. So we're working on the similar axis, but looking at it from the other side. And it's said by many that the age of Aquarius is when we start to turn upwards and return to our full glory. So this month, it's all about realizing your sovereign self and realizing that your heart, which is the element that Leo resides in, in our bodies, is a giant transmitter receiver sending out waves for miles. So if you want to see change in the outside world, it's important to set your dial from the inside so that you can see those changes reflected on the outside. So the responsibility of Aquarius, especially under this very prominent Aquarian full moon is to say set your tone, be the change that you want to see, take responsibility for what frequency you're transmitting from your heart center and if everybody did this then the world would automatically change on the outside. So we're heading towards very very positive times because Aquarius is all about positivity. Coming at the time of February Aquarius is the visionary that can see past the snows and to the new era. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and Uranus is actually knocked off its axis and actually rotates with its rings going in a north-south direction whereas some, a planet like Saturn rotates with its rings going in an east-west direction and this is what gives Aquarians the uh, 
characteristic of being a bit laid back and eccentric. So this full moon in Aquarius is a chance to look beyond the obvious, to be a bit eccentric. And the planet Uranus has just gone retrograde, which means we go inwards and look at our inner wiring and look at our inner responsibilities. So this will be a great time to see into other dimensions, to look at the impossible or the improbable, to imagine bigger and to break the mould of the mundane, to be a bit eccentric, to be a rebel. Rebellion is rebel lion and I feel that this goes very well with Aquarius and Leo. So the rebellious challenging, let's break what's outdated and old and bring in some visionary new energies under this Aquarius full moon. So this is a really exciting age of Aquarius, responsible, eccentric, modern month where we can really start to apply some of the revealing quantum sciences that date all the way back to the mystery school teachings where we can really start to live and apply them and feel coherent, authoritative, majestic. Majesty is another regal word that comes in with when the sun is in Leo. So see if we can concentrate this month on your regal self, on the inner sun and on that transmitter receiver that is your heart center and on the frequencies that are the zigzags of the Aquarian glyph and see if we can really tune in to create a holistic vision going forwards, not just for ourselves but for everyone. We're going to see a lot of rebellion, we're going to see a lot of warfare, we're going to see a lot of craziness going on in the news, but that's just an external illusion. If you can keep it tuned to the heart centre this month, then you'll easily pass this initiation and start to live in a totally different fashion. My crystals for Leo are sunstone and gold. Sunstone is quite obvious, just like moonstone is good for cancer, as cancer is ruled by the moon. And sunstone is very good for Leo. It's got that warmth and that genuine, again, solar plexus, heart center, confidence and radiance that goes with it. My oil for Leo is orange, which is more warm and friendly than the grapefruit, but still very much linked. And again, you'll be dealing with those centers energy centers of the body, the solar plexus and the heart center to shine out and to create. My crystals for Aquarius are Chrysocola and Amethyst. Amethyst is a great healer. It's really like the lavender oil of the crystal world. You can pretty much use it for anything. But also with that deep purple, it's the sovereignty, it's the responsibility and it's the knowing and the ultimate blend of red, which is fire, and blue, which is water, the masculine, the feminine, the electro, the magnetic. Chrysocola is actually a beautiful blue and aqua and green stone, and these are great colours for Aquarius, with its links both with water, but also with the ether, and I find it a very calming and wise and meditative stone to work with at this time. My herb for Aquarius is grapefruit because it's a little bit different. It's got that spark, it's got the solar aspect of the citrus, but it's also got that tang that's slightly different. I'm not going to be too familiar, I'm going to be a bit quirky energy. And it's very uplifting, it's good for the heart centre and the crown. And it's a, an uplifting and motivating and opening an optimistic oil. So those are the energies for this month. Just go deep, go inwards, know thyself and radiate truth. And I'll see you next month.